Hi everyone, this is Nikki Reddington with Nikki's Network and I am so thrilled. We happen to be in the Voice Museum and this is one of the places that Eric is very proud of and he has um, put a lot of work into building. My special guest today, he is the president of Van Osdon Farrar, Mr. Eric Von Grimmenstein. Um, a lot of history with the company. It started back in 1914 and Mr. Van Osdon was personal friends of Thomas Edison and was given the state of Indiana to market the Edison business phonograph and that's what they called the machines back then. With the Edison machines there was the music phonograph that people have seen with the cylinders and the morning glory horn. We started in 1914 and I thought you know with this room why not take it back to the beginning of recorded voice and that's what's displayed in here. We tease that we're going to bring them up to 1877 technology. And so in the middle of one of the display cases, it says before 1877, no one had ever recorded the human voice. And Thomas Edison had an idea. He was working on Alexander Graham Bell's telephone and had a concept how to do it. Drew up a sketch, gave it to his chief engineer, and five days later came out with his first prototype, which a copy of it is displayed here in the museum. And you'll see a flow of technology from 1877 with his early tinfoil units, and they call them tinfoil phonographs because you actually recorded on tinfoil. And uh, it came out with a lot of different variations of that. Then as he's always into inventing something new, after about two years he got bored and jumped on inventing the light bulb. Got bored and invented the light bulb. Oh my goodness, that is unbelievable. And what is shown next is, uh, which is kind of ironic because he was working on Alexander Graham Bell's telephone. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell decided to perfect more Edison's phonograph. So now Alexander Graham Bell, uh, for the next several years, took the tinfoil phonograph to a next uh, generation, came back to Edison, who has now invented the light bulb, and said, let's partner and take over the voice recording industry. And Edison said, let alone, I'm not going to partner. You're violating my patents. So these two guys, Bell and Edison, they went different ways. And the room shows the evolution of Edison over time with his newer products that eventually became linear and the room depicts Alexander Graham Bell's products as they evolved and eventually became Dictaphone Corporation. And then later on, it's Lanier and Dictaphone competing between each other. So you've put on a lot of work in this museum. How long have you been finding and collecting these things? We've been downtown for forever. My dad was not a collector. Uh, he, he was the jock in the family, and I was the kid building models in the basement. So. When we built the building, we decided why not have a space for the museum, the history of the company. And with my hobbies, I used to collect antique radios, phonographs, jukeboxes, uh, gas pumps, coke machines. And with, with this, it was a natural for me to be able to find the items and restore them. So I, almost all the restorations were done by myself. It's labor of love. And, Seriously? Uh, I, I look around here sometimes and wonder when did I get all this done, but uh, we've run out of room here, so pretty much what we wanted for the museum uh, is what we have now, because there's not much else that I would want that's not displayed in here. It tells pretty much the whole history of recorded voice, and uh, so I'm not saying there's not something out there, but I still look, but um, we've pretty much got what we want. Thank you so much for joining Nikki's Network today, and congratulations with Thank all you. your success and putting this spectacular museum together. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody.